Welcome once again to Wide Angle. Sir, you have a very long border with Afghanistan. And that is a, a crux of the matter these days, it's a, where the world focuses on, on Afghanistan. Uh, the Americans, President Obama has had a rather rough conversation, not, not the most, uh, uh, shall we say, polite of conversation with, with uh, Mr. Karzai. He says, now it's all over, I shall be, we shall be dealing with the next regime. Meanwhile, we are packing up and leaving at the end of the year. Now, what in these are the circumstances. In this situation, what does Iran, India, and which other countries together can do what? Well, let me first make one point, and that is uh, the United States' past experience. Let's not go back to Vietnam, to, uh, to Iraq and Afghanistan, has shown the fact that the efficacy of force in international relations is no longer the same as it was in the 19th century. Force is no longer a uh, meaningful, productive instrument of foreign policy. And the United States has learned that, I think, through the hard way, but unfortunately the verbiage, the wordings are not changing, they're always talking about all options being on the table, as if the use of force is still an option. It's not a civilized option, the civilized world has put it aside. So it, Afghanistan is a very clear indication of that reality. Americans have invested a lot of force, a lot of blood in fact, a lot of money and blood in Afghanistan, and the result is that now that they are leaving, they're leaving behind a legacy that is less than something to be proud of. Now, Afghanistan can be a much more secure uh, country without foreign forces in Afghanistan because foreign presence in and of itself breeds resentment and, and it, it provides a breeding ground for extremism. So what is important is for all countries, Iran and India included, but Pakistan also, who have a stake in a stable future in our region. Whether they pronounce it or not, whether they articulate it or not, all of us need stability in this region. All of us need uh, stability in Afghanistan in order to be able to have prosperous, secure borders. So for all of us it is necessary, particularly for Iran and India, who see very similarly the future, a, a stable Afghanistan, as in their uh, mutual interest, to work together with the Afghan government and with the Afghan people to ensure that withdrawal of foreign what, forces... What specifically can, say, Iran and India do for instance? Uh, a couple of things. One is to ensure that withdrawal of foreign forces will be the beginning of more stability rather than a vacuum to be filled by extremists and terrorists. The other is to work together in order to improve the economic situation in Afghanistan. The war economy in Afghanistan has persisted, and the war economy produces warlords, produces terrorists, produces drug traffickers, and these, uh, in fact, reinforce one another. So it is very important for Iran and India to work together in order to improve the economic situation in Afghanistan and also create a regional mechanism for Afghanistan to live in stability with its neighbors and to live more prosperously. You said that specifically we can do two or three things in Afghanistan. There are some other issues, not just, uh, in fact, Chabahar is one of them. What is the status of Chabahar? That is impinges entirely on our cooperation with Afghanistan. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to talking to my Indian uh, friends and colleagues uh, in the next two days uh, to work out a general scheme to co for cooperation between Iran and India, not only on Chabahar, which is an extremely important part of it, but on a corridor that connects India, Iran, and Afghanistan, and, and, and Central Asia, and provides a very positive contribution to the development of the entire area, but to peace and stability in the area. Dilate on that just for a minute. Uh, I believe it is, it is extremely important. In, uh, Afghanistan is a landlocked country. We have a number of countries in uh, Central Asia who depend 
on uh, some sort of a transit route, uh, diversification of their means of, of trans, uh, transport and export and import. So Chabahar is strategically located. It's a, it's a project that can be uh, the symbol of cooperation between India and Iran and a symbol of Indian and Iranian contribution to peace and stability in the entire region. So it's, it's an extremely important project, but that should be seen within the context of a general picture of what we want to do there. So yes. we are going to work on Chabahar and we are going to work on the rest of the project. The gas pipeline. The gas pipeline is an, also an, 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 an extremely important project uh, that has been, uh, so to say, on the back burner for, for quite some time. But I think that also can contribute further to peace. Iran uh, is the world's largest producer of gas, and we have a lot to offer for the future of uh, Indian economy. And we, we see, uh, and we're very happy to see, the growth in Indian industry and the growth in India. And that requires a lot of energy, and Iran is an is a reliable source for that. Probably for countries, you will not find a more reliable, more independent source for uh, provision of your energy needs. That is absolutely true. Now, uh, in fact, we were hearing that, that Oman was being considered as some kind of a substation, that you, we get our gas, you sell it to Oman, and Oman sells it to us, something like that. Well, there are various possibilities that no. can be entertained. Oman is a, is a possibility. Oman is very friendly, one of our good neighbors uh, with whom we've always had uh, very strong neighborly ties. And Oman is a good friend of India. So Oman can be a good uh, intermediary for that. Uh, also, uh, we should not set aside the peace pi pipeline. I believe the peace pipeline from Iran to Pakistan and to India is still a viable project and still something that can bring much more than gas to India and Pakistan and it can help foster much better confidence and coexistence between these two very important friends of ours. Excellency, the Saudis have been singing a slightly different tune recently. There have been changes inside Saudi Arabia, minor changes, their diplomatic style seems to be undergoing a little change. And they are talking about India-Pakistan peace. And therefore, the impression was that they, they were very close to Nawaz Sharif and to Pakistan. And now they are being slightly ambidextrous. Uh, what, what, what is your reading of, of the changes in the Saudi approach to diplomacy in the region? Uh, well, I hope that Saudi Arabia uh, will play uh, a constructive role. We would certainly welcome a positive role by Saudi Arabia in bringing closer India and Pakistan. That is in the interest of everybody. Uh, but in our immediate neighborhood, uh, we hope that Saudi Arabia will play a positive, constructive role in putting an end to the extremism and violence that is spreading to our region, threatening everybody, including Saudi Arabia. I believe nobody will be immune from extremism. As our closer friends have learned, that Taliban became their own menace uh, after a while. Saudi Arabia and others who are supporting extremists now will unfortunately learn, this is inevitable course of history, they will inevitably learn that uh, extremism, sectarianism is in nobody's interest. And I hope the sooner they come to this realization, and act accordingly, the better it will be for all of us in the region and the wider world. Do you world. feel the vibrations a changing air in their diplomatic style? Say, uh, if you take uh, Syria as an example. Well, Syria... Are they changing? Uh, well, I, I certainly hope so. I haven't seen any indications no, yet. But, but I, I certainly hope so. There are others in the region who are moving more uh, seriously towards understanding the realities and setting, setting aside the illusions. Uh, I, I, believe, I believe our Turkish friends are looking at the realities. Uh, I believe others in the region, I believe people in the West are looking at the realities. They have a long way to go in my view because it is important for everybody. People are being killed in Syria. That's at the end of the day. Whoever is responsible, people are being killed. Innocent civilians are being killed in Syria. So we all need to set aside illusions and work on a peaceful but possible peaceful outcome.
or possible political outcome. And it is important to look at the realities. It is important to set aside illusions that Syria can be the slaughterhouse of extremists. It won't be. Extremists are not slaughtered. Extremists breed through such environments. So it is important for our friends in the region to understand this and to work together to address this issue and in the process to bring an end to the Syrian tragedy that is engulfing the entire region. You, but you haven't seen any evidence yet of a Saudi change of stance. Yeah. Uh, I, I hope to be able to see it. Maybe I haven't looked hard enough. If you have, I'm, I will be happy to hear it. We'll resume this conversation after a short break. Thank <laughs> you.